Hello there. In this video, we will be learning about collisions in two dimension. But before that, first let's understand what do we mean by collision. So a collision is an event where two or more objects come into contact with each other, usually resulting in a transfer of energy and momentum. So we classify collision into two major types. The first type is called elastic collision and the second one is called inelastic collision. So the elastic collision is a type of collision where both the momentum and the kinetic energy are conserved. For an example, the collision between glass balls is considered to be an elastic collision. Whereas inelastic collision is the one in which the momentum is conserved but the kinetic energy is not conserved or we can say that it is not the same. So some of the energy is lost as heat, sound or deformation. So uh, in a nutshell, Elastic collision is the one where the momentum and kinetic energy both are conserved whereas in inelastic collision the momentum is conserved but the kinetic energy is not conserved. The example of an inelastic collision would be a car crash. So most of the collisions that we see in our day to day life are inelastic collisions. There is a sub case of perfectly inelastic collision. For an example this is a car and that's colliding with another car and after the collision both the cars are moving together. Now this is an example of a perfectly inelastic collision where both the objects will glue together and start moving with the same velocity. Now that we have a basic understanding of what collisions are, let us understand the elastic collision but in two dimensions. Now let's take this situation where there is a ball with mass m1 that is moving in this direction with a velocity of u1. Let's say this ball collides with another ball of mass m2 and this particular ball is let's say at the rest. Now after collision, so before collision I am highlighting these with the red colors. After collision I am highlighting these with the green colors. Now after collision, let's say this first ball is moving with a velocity of v1 at an angle theta1 from the horizontal. And let's say the second ball is moving with a velocity of v2 such that it makes an angle theta2 with the horizontal. Now first of all we can resolve this velocity into two components. The one near to the theta, the theta1 would become the cos theta. So it would become v1 cos theta1 and the vertical one would become v1 sin theta1. Similarly we can resolve v2. So this one would become v2 cos theta2 and this one would become v2 sin theta2. Since we know the collision is elastic, so we can say that both momentum and the kinetic energy would be conserved in this situation. First, let's conserve the momentum. So we can say that the initial momentum would be equal to the final momentum. But since it is happening in two dimensions, so I can say that the initial momentum in x direction would be equal to the final momentum in the x direction. Similarly, I can say that the initial momentum in the y direction is equal to the final momentum in the y direction. Also, since energy is a scalar quantity, so it won't be like into the different directions. So we can simply say that the kinetic energy initial would be simply equal to kinetic energy final. So with the help of this, we can create three equations, equation number one, equation number two and equation number three. Now, first let's conserve the momentum in the x direction. Now, you might be familiar with the formula of momentum. Momentum is equal to mass times the velocity. Now, what is the initial momentum of the entire system? So, momentum of this particular thing would be m1 u1. The momentum of second ball would be 0 since it is at rest. Now, that would be equal to. Now, what is the final momentum of the system? So, for the yellow ball, it would be m1 multiplied by v1 cos theta 1 plus the final momentum of the blue ball would be m2 times v2 cos theta 2. Now this would be our first equation. Equation number 1 we can say this. Now in order to find the equation number 2 we can say that the initial momentum in the y direction would be equal to the final momentum in the y direction. Since in this situation, the ball is only going in the horizontal direction and the second ball is anyways at rest. So we can say that the initial momentum of the entire system would be zero in y direction. That would be equal to 
Now in the final momentum, so this particular thing is in the plus y axis and for the second ball it's in the negative y axis. So I can say, so for the ball number 1, we can say that it would be m1 into v1 sin theta1 plus for second ball it would be m2 times negative v2 sin theta2. Now this would be our second equation. Now since the collision is elastic, so apart from conservation of momentum, the kinetic energy of the system is also conserved. So we can say that the initial kinetic energy would be equal to the final kinetic energy. And the formula for kinetic energy is half m v square. In this case, we don't need to split the velocity into two components since the kinetic energy is a scalar quantity. So the initial kinetic energy of the system would be equal to half into m1 u1 square and the kinetic energy for the second object is zero since it is at rest. That would be equal to half into m1 v1 square plus half into m2 v2 square and this gives us the third equation. Now in this situation let's say v1, v2, theta1, theta2 these are the variables for us but these can't be calculated using the three equations that we have because we have three equations and four variables. So if any one of these things is given to you, let's say theta1 is given to you, you can easily use these three equations to find the remaining three variables. That's how you solve for the elastic collision in two dimensions. Now, this very same concept could be used even in inelastic collision as well. But the only difference would be in inelastic collision, the momentum would be conserved, but the kinetic energy would not be conserved in the inelastic collision. So that's the only difference. Otherwise, the things would be more or less the same. So I hope the collision in two dimensions is clear to you now. See you in the next video. Till then, bye-bye.